So this is 5782, the month of Av. Now, I find it interesting as we, as we continue to follow the calendar. I'm not going to get ahead of myself and give it away. But I used to call this, last month I had this month coined as Awaken. Because as we're going to unpack the lesson, we're going to start to see that it's about what voice are you listening to? What voice is speaking the loudest to you? And so we want to be awakened to the Spirit of God, and we want to listen to His voice and not any of the competing voices. But I felt like this month, I felt like, I don't know if God's given me a deeper revelation or it's just what's going on in our times. I feel like we, especially in our congregation, have been learning effectively how to hear the voice of God. But we need to be like the lion and have the courage to then take that to the physical realm and make it happen. And that is a lot of what Av is about. It's one, listening to the right voice, but then having the courage to continue on from what God has revealed to you. So we're going to go from awaken to courage. And this is my fifth year to teach through this calendar. Fifth year. And I'm starting to really get a grasp on how it flows in and out of the months and in and out of the feasts and how this calendar and its alignment is the power and the revelation we need in order to not just learn, but act. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's break it down. Well, my computer, you don't get to read that blessing. It will not stay there. Watch. <laughs> May it be your will. <laughs> Lord our God. <laughs> God of our fathers. Hey, this is fun. That she renew for us a good month. <laughs> In, in the Lord. name of the Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, everyone said, Amen. 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 <laughs> what a blessing. Okay. Welcome. Um, I do absolutely love, as I've been talking about, why do we come together every month? One, we want God to bless us as we move forward in the next month. Two, we want to see what the prophetic open heaven is over us in this time. What is being said through the constellations, through the history, through um, our study of our patriarchs of the Bible. We get to see what, what those apply to this time and um, from history to current and how to apply those to our life. Uh, Rosh Kadesh is Hebrew for head of the month. So it is a lunar calendar. When the moon, new moon arrives, they would do a minor celebration, uh, more like an extended Sabbath to thank God for the next month, just like we hopefully are meeting with God once a week and thanking him for the next week. Psalms 84. I love this scripture. This is what the calendar is to me. They grow stronger and stronger. We're going from glory to glory with every step forward. And the God of all gods will appear before them in Zion. Amen. Amen. Okay, these are the elements we're going to look at um, as we do every month. Um, and then we glean what, what we feel like God is saying for the month. Um, this month is a lot rich in history. We're going to look at the constellation of Leo, the lion. We're going to look at the tribe of Simeon, which was Jacob's second son. And we're going to look at the alphabet. I want to say Tet. Don't you want to say Tet? It's actually Tate. It rhymes with mate. Um, it is the ninth letter of the numerical value of nine. And when I'm, sometimes I question why the group that I study that puts these together, um, why they, what, I still haven't quite unlocked what alphabet they pick why and when. But on this month, it's clear. The ninth of Av is the focus of this month. So we're going to look at the numerical number nine. Okay. Color is emerald green. I'll wear my one and only just for you. Okay. And for me, I like to wear the color. Okay. All right. It's the fifth month. Um, the word Av actually means father. Let that sit, sink for a second. And the root word means to will or to desire. So this month, I think it's important to look at what father God will and desire was originally for Av and see how maybe the Jewish nation never quite entered into that but we have with Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, to act to awaken and to listen is what is the key words for this month and there are a lot of key impressions that we're going to tie into all of that. I couldn't quite come up with the word key impressions maybe it will come to me as I teach the lesson you know, sometimes as you start hearing, hearing more, we'll see. All right, let's break it down. 
This is actually a low point in the Jewish calendar. Not for us. Everyone say not for us. Not for us. But when we look at Av historically, it was a low point in this, in the, this entire month. is centered around when this curse, unfortunately, fell on the Israelite nation. And there's a lot that we can learn from the ins and outs of what happened due to a very poor decision made by them at Mount Sinai. And we said, why are we always at Mount... You should hear my voice. Oh, back to Mount Sinai. <laughs> Mom, we don't live on Mount Sinai. And I was like, we're not going to... But God at Mount Sinai put his covenant nation, and we're going to see how that developed, into a school and introduced who he was and it taught him, the nation, about how to operate as a people of God. So there is so much to learn from that time period that Moses graciously wrote down for us. So yes, we cycle back to that a lot, but we can see how it reverberates through and we can see how God is constantly giving us recipes. He's, he's told us in plain, simple logic on how to be in the cycle of blessing versus the cycle of destruction. Unfortunately, the Israelites kept falling into a cycle of destruction They finally reach a point where God's like, yeah, you've made this choice. This is where you are, and here's the consequences. Now, has God continued to be faithful to his promises in his covenant? Yes, every day, day. and we'll talk about that too. Okay, so all was the day the people of Israel chose to receive the negative report from the spies. This whole month is centered around this story. So these 12 spies come back from the promised land. And they say it is everything God said it was going to be. It is full of milk and honey. It's lush. It's fertile. It's a true place where we can grow as a nation and be established just like God told us. However, there's giants in the land. However, a voice of fear was allowed to reverberate through this community. Tens of the 12 spies were like, I don't think we can do it. And they start listening to this voice of fear and doubt, and they take the easy road to stay put. We have two spies that have a voice of faith. I believe these two spies learned their lessons from Passover, learned their lessons from God provided is my you know provider and my healer. He's provided me with manna. He's provided me with you know changing the bitter water. They did their film strip. They listened to the testimony of the past to believe the promises that God had for the future. They were the voice of faith. So as we study every element today, we're going to look at the voice of fear versus the voice of faith. Now think back to last month. It was the film strip month. And we talked about blessing versus snares. We talked about how the things that distract us in this world, that idolatry is a real threat to our worship and our covenant and our commitment. So it's, it's, it's not a mistake. By no means, it's a beautiful way that God has written us out throughout the calendar. We go from deliverance at Passover to supply at Pentecost and Revelation to, okay, here's some months, these next two months, where we have the film strip month And we have Av back to back. These two months are where God says, okay, we've spent some time together, right? We spent a lot of time. I've shown you who I am. I've ministered to you. I've loved on you. And now I need to see how you act with those things. I need to see that you are going to take it to another level when idolatry and the voices of fear and you're, you're kind of on your own. And he watches to see how they react. He watches to see what the Israelites choose before he intervenes. Do you see that? Did they choose the voice of fear or did they choose? Did God go to them and say, oh, wait, 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 wait. Remember, remember, remember what I said. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to go into the promised land. And No, he didn't do that. He allowed them to choose. And then he moved forward. And I, I believe that's because God is saying, in order for you to fulfill your divine destiny, You have to be able to act without me holding your hand. You have to have courage. 
You have to have faith. You have to lean on the testimony. You have to overcome idolatry. You have to overcome fear. And when you look at the root word for God Almighty, it means overcome. God wants us to be overcomers, and you're going to see that this month. So we're going to have courage to have of be the month it should have been from the very beginning. Amen? Amen. Okay. So a curse begins and a cycle of destruction begins in the month of Av on the ninth day when they choose the evil report, the voice of fear over the voice of faith. Israel chooses fear. So what happens? Look at this historical account of how this curse has been allowed to continue on the Israelite nation. What breaks a curse? Go ahead. I know I talk a lot. I never ask questions. What, what breaks a curse? Who knows? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Good. Repentance. Repentance. Right. Worship. They have to acknowledge one. That we've made a poor choice. We've repented. That's what repentance is. Acknowledgement and turning away. Israel doesn't, they don't recognize this. They don't even recognize it when Jesus comes. Think about the voice that was speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were still listening to the wrong voice. So look at this, Solomon's temple. These are all things that happen on the 9th of Av. You think Satan doesn't know this date? <laughs> He's like, even Satan overplays his hand. He's telling them plainly. You know, that's not very smart of Satan in my opinion. But anyway, okay, Solomon's temple's destroyed. The second temple is destroyed. There is Jews expelled from Rome. The Crusades is not its shining moment and is killed, is launched, and thousands of Jews are killed. Jews are expelled from England. Jews are expelled from Spain. Jews are dropped off at Warsaw. Um, and the expulsion of Jews from the Gaza, even as early as 2005. And guess when 9 11 happened, folks? That's a curse that has been allowed to be reverberated throughout the years. Now, as believers in Jesus Christ, with the blood of Jesus being our redeemed, we do move and operate in the promised land. The promised land for us is Jesus. The promised land for the Israelites then was Canaanite. And they do eventually get there because our God is one of faith and redemption. Okay. The ninth of Av now is actually a morning, a day of mourning in Israel to this day. Fasting and prayer and they read the book of Lamentations. So if you wanted to enter into that, you would do that on at sundown on August 5th. You could read the book of Lamentations and you could mourn and pray for the Israelites. That's actually one of our keywords for 5782 is to be praying for the house of Israel, to be praying for the first nation. So when we broke, I don't know if you remember, but when we broke down 5782, bet is a first and a covenant word. So part of our mission this year, this prophetic year is to be praying for Israel. August 5th would be an amazing date on the 9th of Av for us as an ecclesia to be praying for those who have not found Messiah. Amen? Amen. Okay. It's a time of major warfare in the straits. Saying is trying to steal our promises. But we, as a body of Christ, will awaken to the voice of the Lord, the Lion of Judah, instead. Okay, on the 15th of Av is when they start to celebrate that they actually did enter into the promised land um, and they have um, a day of celebration during the full moon. Did you know a lot of the celebrations are on the 15th of the month because that is when the moon is at its fullest and we want to operate in fullness. So the Israelites have a lot of these key concepts and alignment that we've missed out on in the years because we didn't understand the Hebraic ways and the calendar. They failed to deliver that or for us to maintain that. So it's really, this is really cool that God is giving this back into our revelation. So it's like a day of Valentine's Day in Israel on the 15th of Av. Interesting, right? A rebirth. I like that word. All right, so what was the original tent for Av? Av was to be the month to celebrate entering the promised land. It was a month for us to show that we've been through Mount Sinai. We've passed our covenant school. We're walking with God and taking over this globe. Amen. God wanted Av to be a month of blessing and celebration of his goodness. Instead, we agreed with unbelief and gave a negative confession. However, not from this group. Okay, they refused to mix with the promise of faith. 
God is a God of second chances. They enter the promised land 40 years later, but they never truly repent. The word assures us that one day Israel will believe in Jesus the Messiah as a nation. We're seeing more and more and more of this in our time, which I think is another blessing in its own form. Um, the curse of Av will finally be broken, and we will move on to the promised land. Okay, let's look at the tribe of Simeon. It's so fun how these all flow together. I, I mean, I get excited about it. Thank you for entertaining me. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> at this, we're moved to the south of the camp. We're looking at these three um, warriors, Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. And together, they are very warlike, very necessary in our lineup. No one gets kicked out of the lineup including you and me. We bring our gifts and our talents. Um, So we want to identify and align with with these tribes. So Simeon is the second son of Jacob. His mother was Leah. We call them the Battle Axe Brigade. They're on the south end. Okay, so this is pretty fun. I think this is fun. So Reuben was known for boiling over. He was not, him and his descendants, kind of their pitfall um, to their redemptive abilities was that they were a little, um, what's the word? Hot-tempered, Hot tempered, uh, quick to react. Yeah, they were, they were known to, bo- impulsive, that's the word I'm looking for. They were a little impulsive, okay? Simeon is known for violence. Simeon and Levi led the raid at Shechem. I don't know if you remember, when they move, Jacob's daughter Leah is raped and overcome by the locals at Shechem. One of the, bo- one of the boys wanted her. Not Leah. I mean, yeah, Dinah. Dinah. Dinah, the sister Dinah of Jacob. They, you know, raped her and was going to claim her for their own. And Jacob was like, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa. <laughs> one, no, you've dishonored my daughter. Two, you have to be circumcised and come into our faith and belief in order to have my daughter. And they do it. They believe him. And they get circumcised. And in their, when they're in there, and that was their act of repentance and reconciliation given to them by Jacob. But these two boys, Levi and Simeon, decide that was not just enough and go around their father and murder. They're violent. And it doesn't serve them well. Jacob's prophetic words over them would be that they would be scattered and they would be punished for their violence. Now, this continues on with Simeon in that when we see Joseph getting thrown into the well, Simeon is not a voice of reason in this act. And it is believed because when, when they're reunited, Joseph, who does Joseph imprison? Simeon. He's like, oh, you're going to stay in this jail <laughs> until these people, until you're, you know, my father comes back with Benjamin. That was his conditions. And so it is believed that he was, Simeon was Definitely not Joseph's. He had continued with this violent behavior. And those are the clues that we have from the scripture. So we also have Gad, which we will study next ma- month. And he was loyal and true. Poor Gad had to keep these guys in line. But they brought enough from the redemptive abilities and their warlike abilities to stay in alignment with the other 12 tribes. Everyone has their place in the ecclesia. This is what we learned from this. Okay. All three were a great war asset. So Simeon's name means to hear, which is a redemptive quality. As we've learned studying the tribes, every tribe has a redemptive quality and a pitfall, and we want to learn from both. And then we want to know what our redemptive qualities and pitfalls are so that we can operate properly. So this is the month to listen carefully, to awaken to the voice of the Lion of Judah He was known as revengeful and violent. We've covered this. We talked about Dinah. We've talked about Joseph. Um, And so we want to avoid those things. So Simeon fits in in the fact that, one, this is the month to listen to the voice of Lion of Judah, to listen to the voice voice of faith over the voice of fear. Simeon's name means to hear. So Jacob prophesies that Simeon and Levi will be dispersed because of Shechem, and that is what happens throughout the lineage of Simeon. Um, he is eventually overcome by the tribe of Judah. Now, we don't even see a prophetic word from Simeon from Moses. So that's another sign he was not on the up and up. But in Ezekiel's future, he's there. So he makes his way back in the redemptive quality, you know, prophecies of God, as we all hope to do, right? Amen? Amen. All right. He's on the south gate with Issachar and Zebulun, which I find very interesting, because that's probably 
the, one of the strongest combos of tribes when you study the tribes that they have Simeon. Even in the future redemptive, he's got to be babysat. That's what it looks like to, to me. But we'll see. I could be wrong. That's just my prophetic thing. <laughs> All right, let's look at Leo. Now, if there's anything that I could articulate about this month, and we're going to go over this um, in our summary a lot, but I don't feel like I can... The strength of our God Almighty. If you could articulate that, I almost feel like it's an aggressive feeling. It's almost a masculine, and when I mean masculine, I just mean that tough, strong, flex my muscles, nothing's getting in my way, getting this done. When you think of a lion, the lion of Judah, you think of strength and ability, at least I do, able to accomplish whatever is needed and done in the kingdom. It is the king of kings. And this picture of just a overwhelming, overcoming strength. That is what this constellation is all about. It is about marrying that strength with your voice of faith, and that gives you the courage to accomplish everything God has shown us in the previous months that needs to go forward. Amen? So the lion that roars, when you hear a roar, you know, we think of Christ as our lamb and our savior. He's also very capable of a roar. And when God roars or speaks, what happens? Light breaks through. Creation happens. Promised lands are created. That roar, that voice, that if I, I wish I could just somehow... Maybe we should blow your shofar. That kind of, you know, frequency. It's, 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 it's amazing. Okay. Amos 3.8. The lion has roared. Who isn't frightened? God has spoken. What prophet can keep quiet? So what is this scripture telling us? This is an incredibly prophetic month. There is a roar and a voice reverberating. Uh, and we want to unlock what is above through this prophetic sound, and we want to birth it into the earth, the earth realm and not let fear squash it. Isn't that a cool picture? Okay, Regulus is the brightest star in this constellation, which means king or little king in Latin, a ruler, a law, lawgiver. So this star can represent Jesus as our king. Sovereignty is defined as a supreme power or authority. God is sovereign. He did push his nation on into the promised land. He is going to overcome Satan. We know from Revelations where it happens to Satan. Av is the month for the divine will to be executed. Sovereign happenings this month. We see the consequences starting to manifest based on what we have decided. God records our actions and makes his decisions accordingly. This is what I was talking about with the spies. God waited to see what the nation decided based on the spies' reports before he acted. And what was his choice? They had to wait, what, another 40 years. But were Jacob and Caleb rewarded for their faith? Yes. So maybe even when our nation is not moving the way we want it to, we can believe in this, that God is sovereign, that there's blessing for us along the path, that we can be a Jacob and a Caleb, even if it seems dark or going the wrong direction. We can listen to a voice of faith and not let that fear overcome us. Amen? Amen. Okay, God sometimes allows things to be destroyed so they can be rebuilt. This is a hard truth, right? We don't want to talk about that. Chuck Pierce gives an example of they were working on a software and when he was in the business realm and just just could not get it going the way they wanted. And they spent all these hours trying to debug it. And what they finally concluded was the best course of action was to start over. Delete it, start over. We see God do this with what? The flood. Mm-hmm. And he promises not to do it again until Jesus returns. And then it's almost as if the earth is deleted and reversed mm-hmm. and start over. And we have the beautiful visions you know, of the new Jerusalem. So could this happen in our life? Yeah. Could a marriage end? Yeah. Can, you know, a business fail? 
but this is another opportunity for us to listen to a voice of faith instead of one of fear, a, a wilderness pattern. Yolanda teaches on that well. Okay. All right, everyone say Tate. Tate. I told you why I thought it was the number nine because we are on, we're studying the ninth of all. So look at the picture. So every alphabet has a pictorial meaning, has a numerical meaning, and then it has the alphabet itself. So every jot and tittle of the scriptures has deep intertwinings. If you study the numbers, if I gave you the number for each of these letters and then put it in a Hebraic word and you looked at the pictures, the numbers, and the word itself, you get a lot of revelation. I think a lot of the scriptures are coming alive to us because we have the technology to do that a lot faster and we see the importance of that now. So it's really interesting. But let's look at the picture, Graham. So what does it look like to you? A swan. A swan. A snake. It also represents a womb. Do you think about something in growing inside? Yeah, and it definitely has the double meaning. So, te is a Hebrew word for the number nine, numerical value of nine. It has two possible translations, with this being the month of choice, which last month was a month of choice too, remember? The snar versus the blessing. So, we have these two difficult months. I mean, everyone loves Passover. We're delivered from the redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone loves Pentecost because what are we getting? Holy Spirit and the Word and all this. We get ministered to. We get propped up. And now we have these two months with God says, remember your testimony. <laughs> Don't let idolatry get in the way. Don't listen to the voice of fear. He's saying, I need you to be warriors. Amen? Amen. So look at these two choices. A good and an evil interpretation. This is the list, least frequent word in the, in the Bible, by the way. So it first appears in Genesis 1-4. God saw the light and the light was good and God divided the light from the darkness this reverberates back to the lion the roar they be, you know when God spoke the world into existence I imagine it was more of a roar and light broke through so as a womb where something is being nurtured and grown we, we see things being conceived this month if they were to have went into the promised land this month that was a birthing they were moving you know something that was being developed Prophetic people see that um, they see the appearance before they see the birthing. Think about how long does a baby have to grow before we get to see them? I mean, we have ultrasound technologies now, but still not the same as them being in the physical realm. There's a birthing process. Now, God, Elroy, the one that sees, gives us these. I see this, I see this promised land, I have it for you. But they physically hadn't experienced it yet, so therefore they didn't believe God. So this is very much a month of things being conceived and us being willing to birth it to its fruition in the next few months instead of squashing it with, well, I don't see it, I don't believe it. Some say it looks like a snake coiled in a basket or a man standing in rebellion. Interesting. I think we see this a little better over here. When a man is bowed down before the crowned man, see the crown? Taken upon himself his yoke, then his soul is subject to the discipline of the Lord and the nine fold fruits of the Spirit will grow in his life. This man will die to himself and all that is outside the yoke of Christ. On the other hand, if the soul refuses to bow down and instead rebels, the inner life will take on the characteristics of the serpent. If that man chooses to live for himself, relying on his own inner sense of autonomy, he will share the fate of Satan and eat dust or the stuff of the flesh. That's pretty tough words, but that is from um, Hebrews for Christians, which is one of my favorite websites to learn the Hebrew language. It's pretty cool stuff. Okay, ready to break it, put it all back together? All right, so this month is about choice to awaken to the voice of faith instead of fear, to move based on, what, um, based on what you see physically or move on what the Lord has shown you. That's our choice this month. Do you believe on what God's conceiving and birthing in you? Or you want to take the easy road and be like, mm, I'm static, I like where I'm, you know, they, the Israelites are like, oh, we'll just stay right here. It's not so bad. This is the month to choose to receive a curse or choose to break a curse. Choose to believe God's promise and choose to enter God's blessing. 
So the challenge is to awaken and listen with your spirit and squash the voice of fear. Okay, Deuteronomy 30, 19. Today I have given you the choice between blessing and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Amen? Amen. Okay, I feel like I've covered this thoroughly. We've gone from past, we were ministered to those first months. And we're moving so that we can experience God's glory with him at Tabernacles. But moving these inner months, these mundane months, it seems like, there's a lot more going on than the mundane in my opinion. But when you look at the calendar and the feast, you're like, well, what are these? There's nothing. What is this? You know, like, and they're like, well, that's the month you work. No, like, yes, you work with the voice of faith, so the voice of fear. So a lot going on. Do your film strip. Listen to the right voice. Put sticky notes on your mirror. Come here. Get re, you know, re-energized every month. Amen? Amen. All right, names of God. This is a, something that we've added this um, calendar year, 5782, that is. And we started with I am, or the Yahweh, where God says, I revealed myself to Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, which is our name for this month, and I'll explain here in a minute. But I am the I am. I'm it. I'm the Lord God. And he says, I am the one that is going you know, be your covenant and made all these promises to the nation of Israelite that we're still seeing the fruit of today. We've seen a lot of fruition and what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Amen. Amen. And God continues to reveal himself through his names. And they're more than just a name. They're more than just a characteristic. They are who God is. And we are made in God's image. Therefore, this is who we can be too. So he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is El Roy, the God that sees. He is also God Almighty. Everyone say Almighty. Almighty. So I just felt like that was the perfect name to marry to this month because of the lion, because of the strength. But because this word is actually um, as El Shaddai only seven times in the Bible. And it's in the Old Testament through this time with the spies where he is saying God Almighty. But once he reveals himself as the I am, you will then see it in the scriptures as Yahweh Shaddai, which is means the almighty God, not just the God almighty, but the almighty God. So you do see it more than seven times. It just changes its order and tone in that I am God and I am also the almighty. So El Shaddai is with you and next to you and giving you recipes and cycles of blessing to operate in. And don't let of or the curse or the voice of fear interfere with what God's shown you these first months. Amen? Amen. El Shaddai. I want to say El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Okay, 5782. That is the year that we are in. I always like to revisit that each time. Build the house of God at home and throughout the world by the power of the gospel. So we want to be decreeing and declaring in our homes and in our relationships, in our communities, um, in our work, and everywhere that we go. That I believe in a God Almighty. I believe in Yahweh should I. And I believe that he is lighting my steps with a mighty roar that cannot be hushed by the voice of Satan and fear. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That's all. Mm-hmm. The clap? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Selena, you want to talk about your picture? Sure. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. So, um, when I first started studying Av, one of the things he really showed me was that there were two lions roaring in the month of Av. Because there's two lions mentioned in the word. The true lion and the false lion who prowls around to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm-hmm. And so um, this picture focuses on the frequency of faith, that that lion is roaring. And so that is the lion to listen to, as we've heard Arista teach and then uh, it's hard to see I need to make it a little bit more contrasted but on the far uh, right there's a shadow it's a giant so the lion is directly roaring at our giants 
And so if we just follow that frequency and we just walk in that way and we trust him, then those giants will be taken care of through his roar, through his. We just have to have the courage to follow that frequency and to walk it out. And so um, then to me, the cosmos in the background just represents all of the opportunities, all of the promises, all of the things that the Lord has for us in awe. And so those are the things we go after, and those are the things we seek, and those are the things that the giants um, try to block out from our sight, because in that shadow there are no stars seen. And so I just think it's a beautiful picture of following that voice of faith in the month of August. So. Beautiful. Thank you. Gail? Yes, you can sit. Yeah, we like sitting. You can stand. I'll stand with you. That's okay. Um, This month of Av, last year, I had the vision, and I saw the the twin children because we were partnering with God. So the more we partner with him, the more we become like him and we look like him because we are in his image. We're his reflection that he's created the maintenance. And that's still true. But as I studied for this year, the Lord was showing me that we are being brought out of our sins of bondage from the past and being moved forward in God. So I saw fists being broken, the chains being broken, because we're not hanging on to the past lives, but we're moving forward into that promised land that God has promised us. So we don't hang on to the fears or unbelief, and we enter into that promised land We stand in faith because we are pregnant with the truth and it will come forth in due time when we pray, believe, and expect it to happen. We must listen to the Father's voice. That's where the partnership comes in. When we partner with God, we will hear his directions and will and act upon him. We will not be holding back because God is with us every step of the way. And the scripture verse that I chose is those who belong to God are partners with him. Fix your thoughts on Jesus, Hebrews 3, 1. Um, The color green of emerald symbolizes growth and prosperity, and the light blue thread symbolizes peace, sky, and the heavenlies. I want to encourage you to read Hebrews 4 today. (laughs) Before she leaves, I want to just thank Arista. Thank you. Can you tell she gets a little excited? I love when she gets excited, but she does shift her names when she gets excited. Yeah, and Dinah, not Leah. No, and it's Joshua. Uh, Joshua, not Joseph. So everybody knows that. She knows that. Okay. But she gets, she's thinking about four steps ahead of where she is. I can tell you and just watch you. <laughs> she has slowed down considerably. Yes. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But I just, I love it because, like she said, this is probably the fifth year that I know of that she's, I know you may have dabbled in it before, but. How far she teaching? But when she started teaching, and the first year she taught, she did not look up from her notes. Wow. Uh, no, that's true. If she didn't have her notes, she could. And now she I know Mama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I want to encourage you because to me this is one of the greatest examples of you pour into what God's telling you to pour into and the fruits will show up. Yeah. Because she not only can teach it to you, she knows it. Mm-hmm. And I tell you guys all the time that if you want to learn something, try teaching. Okay. Because the minute you start teaching it, you have to have some knowledge to teach it. And then you feel like, I don't know anything, I don't know anything, so you dig deeper and deeper. And she is a true redemptive gift teacher, that's her gift. Mm -hmm. But I want you to see, it not only affects her being able to share with us such great examples and to dig deep and to do the history, it shows in her life. This is the beauty. It shows in her life. (laughs) I guess you don't like that. I know. But it is. You can yes. see the confidence. You can see where it's not like it either. No. <laughs> you 
because you are the confidence and you can see where God's saying. So I want to speak a blessing back to Arissa because she is a blessing to us. And the Lord says we bless what he sends to us. So Father God, today we just thank you that this lady has demonstrated in all things that she hears God. And so, Father, I thank you that because she has sought you, because she has cried and quailed and done all the things she needed to do to get your sound and to make sure that you were giving her the truth, she desires the truth above all things. So, Father, we just speak all the blessings that you have for her. We just encourage them to show up today, that her confidence, her ability to trust in everything you say for her to do is there. That if you say to go, she will go. If you say to stop, she will stop. Father, give her the ability to hear you in such a way that it doesn't matter what's set before her. She will take it or reject it, depending on you giving her the wisdom. And so, Father, we thank you today that not only is she blessing all those in her family and all those in all the things she puts her hands to, but she is blessing us as a house boss. And we thank you that she digs deep. We honor this gift and we shamar this gift so that the weaknesses that she still has, Father, we come around and shore her up and say no weapon formed against her will prosper and that she can see and know what you have given to her. And we thank you for this blessing to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love it. <laughs>